my name is Carmen Clarkin. I am a sophomore in Brantford College, and right now I am double majoring in political science and psychology. My parents have both been very sick um, in the past. When I was young, my mom uh, was was really sick. They didn't know what was wrong, and uh, she we almost lost her. A, many times. My senior year of high school, my dad was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Um, and so on top of the stress of applying to colleges and all the things that are going on, now, you know, you never want to hear that word. You never want to hear cancer. You know, I was like, oh wow, like, you know, that was hard and I made it through and now I understand this and I've learned from my experiences and I've grown and now we're good. College, a new chapter. And then I just, it felt like a curveball uh, to find myself in this place where I knew I should be happy. Both of my parents were healthy. Things were going, things were going great by all standards. But I wasn't happy, and I was kept asking myself, you know, why? The journey for me started before being in this class, um, and it kind of was like in that moment, I was like, you know, what would pass me save me right now, like? she probably would be worried about me, you know, like, she'd probably think that I wasn't doing okay. And when I realized that, you know, I was like, <laughs> I need to make a change. Like, like I said, at first it was kind of just like me, on my own, doing my thing, and then I kind of came up with some strategies for fall of sophomore year. I was like, you know, everyone says sophomore slump. I was like, I cannot afford to slump. There is no slumping. Psych in the Good Life was coming spring of sophomore year, and I was like, it's done, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the class. Like, I like became my own case study, where, like I said, I could look at things that had happened to me and then look at things that were happening to me in the moment, and be like, wait a second, I learned in class <laughs> that. Right now, I feel really good. Um, I was talking to one of my friends the other day about it. You know, they were asking me, you know, like, how are you doing? What's going on? I was like, you know, life is really good right now. I'm a first year in Sullivan College and I enjoy music. We are in Harkness Tower, the sexiest place on campus. Those bells up there, they are quite sexy. M music is my passion. I love music so much. Especially in high school, I practice like two to four hours every single day. Like, all the clubs I go to, YSO and Carillon, people are so nice and they're so willing to help me out. I want to become, I want to become more like them. There were two or three weeks um, around October-ish where every single day I was basically sleeping at like 3, 4, maybe even 5 a.m. just trying to catch up on all the work I had to do. I ended up focusing way more on school, way more on work, rather than like my social life, my physical health, my mental health. I ended up skipping my extracurriculars. I started disliking music. For me, I just felt like if I reached out or asked for help all the time, it would make me seem stupid. That's not something you should worry about. I remember hearing about Second the Good Life during Bulldog Saturday, and I thought that it would be a really useful class. I mean, it's the perfect timing for me since it's just something that can help bring you back from first semester and really propel you forward. So honestly, during the first few um, first few le first few lectures, I was a tiny bit skeptical. As I attended more and I listened more, I feel like it's something that. I can really grow with. Where am I going to be in the next few weeks? Um, I have no fun with it. I'd like to go to New Zealand. That'd be cool. There's been a lot of different things that I've done um, in my life. And, you know, at Yale and US, I'm an exchange student at Yale. I started the Yale and US Women in Business student organization um, this past semester with one of my best friends, Betty. And we ended up becoming one of the largest student organizations on campus, more than 66 members, and that was crazy to me. And whenever there was times when people felt, you know, discouraged or there was some issues happening, I'd be just stop and remind people, okay, stop what you're doing. Let's just sit down and remember what's important, like what we're doing this for. It's really the people that matter. Um, at the end of the day, I'd rather get straight Bs and know I make a difference in people's lives and, you know, create relationships that are fruitful and, you know, genuine and real um, any day. So. I think the biggest thing that's important to me is my family and my religion and my friends. And I think at the end of the day, like, nothing really matters after that. I've always been trying to 
you know, make myself the best possible person. I make challenges to myself. If I ever thought negative when I was younger, I'd wear a rubber band and I'd like hit myself. Like it was that like insane about how much I constantly was trying to improve myself. Okay, when I'm doing the assignments, when I'm doing the rewirements, when I'm going to class and any lecture, like it's just a subtle reinforcement every day to like constantly be striving to be the best Chandler that I can become. I came here and I was nervous. I was going to classes and everyone was talking and knew what they were doing and had all, all these great things to share and I just felt like I was there. Um, and so I think at the start of Psych in the Good Life, I was happy, but it was a different type of happy than I normally am. Um, so normally I'd say I'm very, very happy. Um, at the start of Yale, I'd say I was a little bit less so happy. I let myself um, I let my like I let like the anxiety and the worries and you know the six percent acceptance rate get to my head um, and really tell myself okay do you really deserve to be here a lot of the time it's hard really finding my own place and really um, recognizing um, you know that I am enough enough for people enough for relationships enough for even Yale University um, and that's something I really struggle with I was like extremely depressed uh, toward the end of freshman year and through most of sophomore year. And like, this is a vast improvement since then. But I think that where I am right now is still a little bit below most people's average. And I don't think I've seen any great surge in happiness between the beginning of this and now. Maybe, maybe a little inching upward, but not much more. If you're not taking care of your body, then you're not respecting yourself. And if you don't respect yourself, then you can't be happy. Just as much as you have to take care of your body by giving it exercise and giving it rest and giving it the proper nutrition, you also have to take care of your brain because your brain is a part of your body. Sometimes that means that like, you can't keep staring at that piece set that's like making your eyes swim or like you say, I can't mentally handle doing this right now. So I'm going to set it aside and come back to it tomorrow morning after I've had some sleep or I've had some time to like think about it. Questionnaire, the ranking of strengths. I got forgiveness, but I think that is a function of my investment in people. In that when I invest in someone, like I am willing to give them as many second chances. I am willing to drop everything and be there for them if they need me. I guess my hope is to find a better balance within that and find a way to still keep that strength while taking care of myself a bit more. It, it goes back roughly about a month. Um, it was in early January that Deke first reached out to us, which is pretty interesting, right? This all kind of began with, with Deke reaching out to the Yale Daily News saying, hey, like, we think that there's a story coming up for you guys. Uh, our, our